Friends, today is uh, Tuesday. It is the 19th of July, and we're going to be looking again at a nice passage from Exodus 20, this time verses 6 and 7 today as we dig in a little bit into the Ten Commandments and think about them perhaps from a, a different angle than you've thought about them before. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. That's verse 7 of uh, Exodus chapter 20. It's interesting when we think about the Ten Commandments. In, in, in some ways, the Ten Commandments are framed to address us critically, so that the implication is that um, you, know, you don't need speed limits if everyone is driving sensibly, right? Uh, that the that these laws then and, the, and some of the restrictions that are imposed by God, uh, commanded by God, imply that that we're living in ways that are destructive and hurtful, and so uh, the setting of limits itself is a kind of critical address to us. It implies that there's disorder in our desire and our affections. The biblical way of expressing this is to say that we serve false gods. We um, we pursue, to destructive degrees, uh, goals and courses of action that become our focus. They, they're the way we use our time and our resources. The ways we use our time and our resources and the things we think about become idols to us. That's what idolatry is, is to serve something, to spend your energy and time trying to acquire it, to master it, uh, to, to be focused on it. And you know, you see around us the gods of pleasure, the gods of success, the gods of approval, and uh, these can come to dominate our time and our energy. And in so doing, we become self-centered and self-serving. The Ten Commandments, however, are not just critical. They're not just, when we read them, they don't just point out the fact that this issue of idolatry and self-centeredness is, is an issue that we all face. They're also aspirational, so they set out a different path, a different pattern for life. Um, the central problem with idols and false pursuits is not simply that they lead us down the wrong path, is it, is it that we don't get on the right path. And so uh, they make impossible the, the kind of uh, life and relationship of love and service that can be lived in God's name. So this phrase, to make wrongful use, to make rightful use of God's name, is to live in a way that honors his character and uh, his instruction. And so that, that life, which is a life center on love, on service, uh, a life that, that focuses on the needs of others, a life that uh, is, wants to achieve peace and justice in the world, that life uh, that in the New Testament, of course, is framed by the example of Jesus, that life, that life that involves forgiveness, for instance, is, um, is a beautiful and an amazing life. And that's what it means to make rightful use of God's name in prayer and in praise and in words and in deeds that express his truth and express his character. And so the, the Ten Commandments are also aspirational. They uh, aren't just critical, they're not just guardrails, but they actually are aspirational. They, they direct us toward a set of goals and a way of living that is beautiful and true. Let's take a moment and pray. Heavenly Father, help us to read the Ten Commandments and understand them in different ways. We want to see how they critically address us, how they in effect point out things in our lives that need to be corrected and dealt with. But at the same time, we also want to recognize their aspirational character, the way they direct us toward a beautiful life, a life that in which we are um, wearing your name in ways that are true and righteous altogether. We ask this through Jesus our Lord. Amen.